What's going on everybody? Welcome back Jacked Up Fishing. Well, as you can see, it's a beautiful day out today. Yesterday, totally different story. There was tornadoes from Panhandle all the way down to Fort Lauderdale. And if you live in Florida, you know what I'm talking about. And that's one good thing about Florida. The weather comes in and leaves quick. Anyway, well, my wife has asked for a few sheep's head for dinner. And as you're probably well aware, there's hardly any bait at the bait shops. I've been getting questions like, where are you getting your fiddler crabs? Where are you getting your sand fleas? Well, when there's no sand fleas, no fiddler crabs available, there's other options. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So stick around and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Hey guys, the new website is finally complete. You can check out our latest catches, see what's biting, as well as pick up a jacked up hat. We have different colors to choose from and they're very good quality. Also, if you live in or are visiting the Central Florida area, I am now running fishing charters inshore and offshore. All the details are at jackedupfishing.com. If you have any questions, you can also message me directly from the site. So go check it out. I hope to have you guys on the boat with me making a jacked up video for all your friends and family to see. All right, back to the video. So we're back here in the mangroves right now. What I'm looking for right now, it's called the Atlantic ribbed mussel. It's a brown mussel, it attaches itself to mangrove roots, uh, oysters, anything like that. They are edible and uh, sheep said love them. When there's no bait around, you can go back in these back creeks, look around the uh, mangrove islands, get up in the mud a little bit. It's a dirty job for sure, but I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Pretty cool. So we're right here, back here in the mangroves. We're gonna get out the boat, get a little muddy. So what you're looking for is you're looking for a good oyster bank, just like this. It's real shallow. And then up in there, near the rent mangrove roots, you're gonna see a bunch of mud. So this is dirty, like I was telling you earlier. You're gonna need a good set of gloves, or just a glove. Because you're gonna reach down in the mud, it might be some sharp stuff down there. You wanna make sure you don't get cut. You're also gonna need an orange basket. I like to use the basket because after you're done, I'll show you how I clean these. Get them nice and clean, and a basket works the best. You can use a five gallon bucket, but it just makes it a little tougher to clean. All right, let's get up in there and see what we can find. All right, so it looks like I found a few. Check them out, they're right here. And there's a, usually a bunch, there's usually a clump with them. You can see them, they kind of look like this and like this. And that's what it looks like in the mud. So I like to pull a bunch at once, try to get them all in a pile and then put them in my basket. So there's some right there. And like I said, they're usually all around the roots. Sometimes you find clumps of like eight or nine See, and there's a bunch of oysters in there with them, but they go down deep. They get in these little holes. There's a good one right there. Not as many as I'd like to see. That's for sure. Now some of these get pretty big. They actually do pretty good and get real big. So you can't eat them, like I said. We're not eating them today. All right, we got a couple there, but I didn't really like that spot. So we're going to move to a different spot right down the row here. And there's plenty to go. Look at all that. All right, let's go. All right, so I'm going to try another spot. It's pretty dense right here. But I think there should be some mussels in here. I'm going to go look around. Let's go see what we got. All right guys, so it's not as easy as usual, but I have found them. This is what you're looking for. See that right there in the mud? That's what we're looking for. Now that means they're all over. I can see them in the mud. And we're gonna pull some out of here. See some more right there? And I'll point them out on the screen for you guys so in case you can you know what to look for. But here, let's get in, let's get in there and get some. All right, let's grab this one right here. See that one? He's attached down there and I usually just get in behind them in the mud, start taking them off. 
and they're attached by oh man he is in there all right let's grab this one right here see that one he's attached down there and i usually do just get in behind them in the mud start taking them off here's another big cluster of them right here they're all around here so yeah what i do usually reach in there and grab that one that i see and it usually yields a few more well, there's a good one right there a couple good ones huh it's a regular oyster and this is why you wear your gloves nice big big muscle all right guys so i got a few i didn't get as many as i'd like to get right now but i'm short on time but you get the gist of it you crawl around in the mangrove trees you see them they look like little clams sticking out of the mud you grip them down usually there's a clump of five or six of them together i wasn't lucky enough to find them today i gotta switch some spots up but that's what you got they're usually pretty thick so and did i say it's a dirty job it's a dirty job here it is here's some here's some in the basket and what i like to do is just shake my basket like this kind of like sifting them get all that mud out of there so when you clean them off this is what you get nice big muscle i got about i don't know a dozen or two so we're gonna go to the jetty the good thing about it is is what bites this sheep's head redfish drum pompano whiting you name it they bite it so i have a good chance of catching something i'm gonna go post up at the jetty hopefully it's not too rough and we'll see what we can do deal i'm at the jetty it's beautiful out here we have maybe just a couple feet the tides ripping out i'm anchored up right here temperature's pretty brisk but it's not too bad it's a beautiful day so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how i open up these muscles and hook them on i'm going to use a bottom sweeper jig to start and see how we do with that let's do it so here we go guys i just take the muscle and i just crack it the pair of pliers take everything that i'm not going to need out chuck in the water that also makes good chum and it's pretty much just like a clam yep just like that so you get to that good meat take it and scrape it and that's your bait right there it's like a big clam so what i'll do is take the bottom sweeper jig Boom. Take the bottom sweeper jig and just kind of hook it all in there. Just like that. And like I said, everything, and I'm talking everything, bites this. First drop. Let's see what we got here. Using a pen, seven foot pen squadron. Damn. He got me. Let's go for this big boy right here crack them open peel all this off the shells are real soft so nothing crazy i just like to take the i just like to take these pliers pull off a piece of the shell gives you a little hard time just cracking some more just like that he's pretty tough on this one Scrape all around, try to get that muscle. That muscle is a good thing to hook to. They've also got like this little piece of like, it's almost like grass that they that I hook through. Get all that out. Usually a knife works better. I don't have a knife with me. That's pretty much it. Take the rest, throw it in there as chum. Take your bottom sweeper, hook it through there a bunch of times. And it's like I said, it's pretty much just like a clam. 
just like that boom that was a good hit i just had so hopefully you get something let's drop it down again all right come on baby come on mama needs some food I think I just had one on. Didn't even know it. All right, we just switched to a fish finder rig. See if this works any better. Using a one ounce lead. Let's see what we can do. I don't think the bottom sweeper jig was where it was at just then. So we're gonna find out. How I like to fish these, I just sit them on the bottom and then I'll lift up every now and then just so slightly. If I feel any tension, start reeling. Wind's starting to kick up pretty good right now. Oh, damn. Oh my God. That was a good one. That was a good one. So I switched to a fish finder rig, guys. Got a number one circle hook. It's gonna hook this all the way through a few times. It's a good muscle there and I just missed a good fish just now on this rig so I think this is where it's gonna be at just like that just pile it on that hook kind of conceal the hook let's go let's see what we got let's drop her down one ounce lead fish finder rig feeling some stuff got him oh yeah that's a good one too yeah walk back here and get this net oh yeah flying solo here oh and he's a dog too look at that bad boy oh <laughs> Oy. That's what I'm talking about. Mom's gonna be eating good tonight. Let's get a good measurement on him here. Buddy. It's like about 18 and a half inches. All right, guys, look at that. That's a stud, stud fish right there. Off the mangrove muscle, I call him. Brown Ridge muscle. What do you think about that? Good night. It's a stud. That is one big boy. All right, let's put him on ice. Let's get on the next one. Well, I'm on the last bait. It's right here. I'm going to crack it open. Hopefully, I get another one. So far, I got a pretty big one, 18 and a half incher. I'm not unhappy. I wish I had to get it a little bit more, but here we go. fish finder rig i leave that grass on there because i like it i like throwing a hook through it because they will eat it they'll eat that a little bit of fiber if you know what i mean leave a comment below if you've ever used these muscles before Let's see if i can get one let's go Going down, going downtown. On bottom, let it just sit there. Every now and then, just check it. There he is, we got him. I don't know what he is, but oh, look at this little guy. Little blenny. Pretty cool little fish. Back in the water. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I had a couple hours to burn after work. It's just now starting to set, the sun's starting to set. 
So I was able to get a nice 18 and a half incher. My wife's gonna be stoked and uh, I'm gonna go fillet it for her. I was hoping to catch a little bit more, but that's the way it goes sometimes after this big front. Well, I'm gonna head to the fillet table, guys, and I'll see you back there. We'll fillet this bad boy up. Guys, we're back at the dock. Everything's finally cleaned up. We got the boat all cleaned up. Our fish right here on the fillet table, and he is a good one. Check him out. 18 and a half inches, and I'm pretty pumped. I get to cook this up for my wife. She's just got home from work, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fillet this bad boy up. Whoa, that's a big old freaking coon right there. Whoa, you better get it, boy. <laughs> He's going back over there, get on out of here. Well, that was pretty wild, guys. That was a pretty fat coon, just walked right up on me. Anyway, so I'm gonna get back to it. 18 and a half inch sheep's head. I'm gonna go ahead and fillet it out. And uh, I don't know how I'm gonna cook it yet, but we'll see what we do. Let's go ahead and get to filleting. So I got my crystal knife here. What we're gonna do right behind the fin as you normally do. Want to get a little start? They got some big scales. This is a fat winter sheep's head. Get it started. Go up and get that head meat. Flip your knife over. And you're just going to outline them just like that. Right along his backbone. Yep. Now, I usually just stick my thumb right in there. Make sure I got a good deep cut so I can get a good thumb hold. And you're just going to rake the bones just like... Any other fish. Get through them pin bones there. And I usually go right above the rib cage. I just tilt my knife around just like that. Go on the other side of the spine. That's the spine of the fish right there. And this is one fat sheep's head, man. See how I'm going over that rib cage just like that? It's kind of hard to fillet these fish when they're fresh. I usually like to keep them on ice a little longer. But that's it. That's a fat sheep's head. Look at that. That's a killer fillet. Same thing with the other side. Just going to get right behind the fin here. The dorsal fin. Or I'm sorry. You're going to get behind the pectoral fin just like this. Get right up in there. Tilt your knife over. And you're going to do the same thing as you did on the other side. These pre-spawn sheep's head are seriously fat. The hardest thing about sheep's head is their rib cage. You just gotta learn to go through the pin bones and then go up and over that, that rib cage. Got to get through it there. There we go. See how I'm doing it, working it nice and easy. Look at them. Look at that meat. That is some big meat. That's the sheep said. Look how fat that thing is. All right, going in the water. Now we're just going to skin these just like any other fish. Sheep's head are pretty, pretty, the skin is really thick. So you ain't got to worry about going through it like a king mackerel or a wahoo or a Spanish. I'm just going to feel the pin bones. You can feel them there and cut them out. And I like to get all the bloodline out that I possibly can on these fish really makes a difference when you go to cook it so that's it let me do this one for us nice fillets
I ended up going through the skin a little bit up top there. No biggie, just, just got to come back. Same thing on this one. Want to get rid of that bloodline. Get rid of them pin bones. Get rid of this fin meat. That's how you know you did a good job filleting. Is when you get that fin meat. Oh. Two nice fillets. We gonna be eating good tonight. Guys, right. that's it. Two nice fillets. I got them right here. Looking pretty. That's our dinner for tonight. That's all she was wanting. I'm going to probably do some, either some sandwiches or something like that. Something really cool. Dice up some stuff for her. But uh, let's get in the kitchen and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Kitchen. So what I decided to do, we have these awesome buns from Publix. Nice fresh buns from the bakery there. What we're going to do is do a blackened sheep's head sandwich for you guys. Right now I got a cast iron pan. We put a little bit of olive oil. That way it doesn't stick. And I got the fish prepped up real good. Cleaned all everything up cut all the bloodline out and uh it's gonna be awesome so let's get to it so what i'm seasoning this with of course staple in everybody's house that fishes little old bay then we're gonna put a little granulated garlic on it and then we add a little weber's it's like chicago steak it's really good that trio combined makes a really good um, taste for the fish so let's go ahead get this fish in the pan let's get it going so we're putting our granulated garlic, our Weber's, and our Old Bay seasoning on the fish. So with a cast iron skillet on medium heat, we place the fish season side down, and then uh, on top of a little bit of olive oil, of course, so it doesn't stick. We also add a little bit of black pepper, fresh ground. I always love the taste of that. And then we add the garlic on the back side. No salt, because it's already salty from the seasoning. Oh boy, that thing smells good. All right, let me get these buns done. So for a quick little sauce, we're just gonna put some mayo and some sriracha together. We like that heat. Put it together in a little uh, container and just mix it up with a fork. Really good little mixture. We'll use this to dress the sandwich when we're done. All right guys, we're all done. Gonna put Boy, that is a nice piece of fish right there. Nice. All right, we're going to dress it with a little bit of red onion. And then some of the uh, sriracha mayo mixture. All right. All right, guys, we're done with the sandwich. My wife is home from work. She actually helped me with that at the end, which is good. We did a little box salad from the grocery store. We also have some fish left over and we're gonna go eat we're gonna end the video right here i appreciate everybody who's watched subscribed and if you have uh, any experience with these muscles that we use for bait today go ahead and leave a comment i'd love to hear them other than that i'll see you on the next video jacked up out